Hello, my name is host Eric. I'm the host talking with famous people. And in this episode, I'd like to throw out the topic of the third leg of truth. No, not truth's penis. The third leg of the stool of truth. Without which, it would be unable to stay upright. Correct. You speak truth, sir. If you were to take one of the legs away, it would fall over. So... A three-legged stool requires all three legs, and I think the three-legged stool phenomenon, which happens in a certain kind of argumentation, certain kind of arguments require two supporting uh, legs in addition to the core warrant, and then if it's done right, each one holds up the other one accordingly. Some arguments just happen that way, and I think that may be the case with truth. So, in the status quo, we're caught up in this notion of a couple of possible understandings of truth. One, on the physical level, that a sentence is true or not based on whether it conforms to our sensory experience. I'm holding this metal thing here is true because I am actually holding it physically. So we talk about that. That's a truth bearer, truth carrier understanding of truth, in which we compare a statement to physical reality and see if it conforms. The second, the second type of understanding of truth we utilize is a metaphysical understanding of truth that relates the um, the truth value of a given statement to the intention of of the person. So, in that case, the most simple example is, "No, I didn't eat the cookie." It's false because. Uh, you can compare it to the physical level and say, well, it's false because the cookie was eaten by that individual. It, you can compare it on the metaphysical level. You say, it's false because the kid's lying because I can tell they're lying. You know, you can tell somebody's lying uh, with, all, uh, with a lot more certainty than you can tell any sort of physical evidence, usually, that that was a, how the cookie was eaten. So the metaphysical aspect of intentionality is, is the second leg of the stool. The third leg of the stool is meta metaphysical, so to speak, or at least it's also metaphysical, but it's it's interpersonal metaphysics rather than rather than intrapersonal metaphysics, and it has to do with consensus regarding the meaning of the words. So definitionally, something is can be true, and in fact. At the end of the day, uh, sentences that have truth values contingent on statement connectives often do come down to definitional uh, truth. But this definitional truth means we don't we don't have a single definition that is the true definition of a word. Instead, what we have is a consensus about how the web of interactive meanings ought to play normally. What a given splay of of language produces in terms of expected meaning. So if I say, look, a dog's over there. And when you look over there, you're going to see a, um, a dog, four-legged furry creature. If, in fact, I'm talking about a guy who's like a player and I'm using an old-fashioned term, so that guy's a dog. Like they used to use that expression to mean he's a, a, a guy who sleeps around and you look over there and there's actually a guy standing there, um, then you'll have two experiences. One, you'll note that, oh, that's not um, what I expected because that's not the meaning most people would would take from the sentence. They would anticipate to see a furry dog, right? However, I'd also note that in this instance, it's a legitimate use of the word and that the other person... The reason they said that way was because they wanted to cause me to have that surprise reaction of interaction with language in that way, probably. Or it could have been unintentional, but, you know, either way, it, it's meaning, the meaning of the sentence and the truth value of the sentence is contingent upon the consensus meaning of the people. So if he said, hey, that's a dog over there, and you actually looked at him as a pig, and he had no justification for it whatsoever, then that sentence would be false. If he gives it, if it's a human, and he gives you that justification, then the sentence is true. So a sentence can be validated as true through any one of the legs independently. 
However, you either have to explain why that particular node of the system allows truth to be sustained within its framework by one leg, or you need to link in and show consistent, consistency with the other legs if you want it to actually be sound. So you need to show, usually it's not in doubt whether or not there's a consensus meaning of the word thing. And then you need to show that, in fact, the intention of the person is correct. That's what I critiqued in an earlier video tonight. I didn't say things he was saying were false. I'm saying his intention is wrong because he's intending to prove the conclusion he already has and cherry picking evidence and not making good arguments and in fact avoiding arguments that disagree with his position. If you're doing that, then you're wrong. It's not true because it lacks the intentionality aspect. And then on the third leg, of course, is the truth carrier, truth bearer function thing where you actually look at the world. So that's my little three-legged stool model of truth that um, I, I don't know if it exists already or not. I I know the truth bearer, truth carrier model exists. I know the correspondence model, which is the definitional model basically, exists. I'm not sure about the intentionality model. I wouldn't be surprised if it's out there somewhere. I don't know if it's been framed quite this way before as a three-legged stool. I think that's what it is. I think it's the most accurate description of truth. pretty good. Thanks, Sarah. I blanked out. What are we talking about? That was pretty clean, too, guys. I mean, I, <laughs> I, 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 I just leave it at that for the, for the viewing audience. I, I went through that pretty clean. I think I didn't repeat myself, and I mean, a little bit it was as necessary, but I think it was it's pretty clear. You know? It's one of those things I'll have to go back and listen to. Cool. Well, I, I like to t throw out those topics. I know they're not the most popular topics, for sure. But it's stuff I think about because, you know, if you're going to try to find something to be passionate about in life, some sort of act of, of like, goodwill on a human scale, not on a big human scale, not just like on an individual level scale, right? If you're trying to 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 make a difference in some way, then it's hard to really get to the meat of the issue without without getting into the nuts and bolts of it somewhat, you know? Yeah. Anyway. I just have the reports for it. Um, I typically get a. Okay, well, Barry's saying all kinds of stuff here in the chat that I'm mostly am missing. Let's They're talking about see. confirmation biases and cognitive dissonance, I think. <laughs> Barry says, don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. I was so worried. Oh my God, Barry. I am so relieved to find you here. I was worried to death. It's a TI thing, huh? Well, I wouldn't understand. Uh, I'll, I'll leave TI stuff to you guys. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it for this session. I think that seems like a good stopping spot. Thank you all for being here very much. And thank you at home for watching. And don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. <laughs>